of, of velocity that we're having and that we carry with us and, and how you get it out of the system, you can, you can turn that into a power number. And, and Phoenix dissipates about 34 megawatts of power in, during the seven minutes from uh, top of atmosphere to touchdown. All right, so if, if you think of it in, in, in uh, energy usage terms of a, of a home, uh, that, that, that 34 megawatts is enough to power about 210,000 homes. We ran quick calculations on this. And when you do a census lookup, you find out that the greater Topeka, Kansas area is about 210,000 homes. So Phoenix could power uh, a, a medium-sized city for about seven minutes. <laughs> um, so that's one way of looking at it. Okay, so we spend about half the EDL in the hypersonic phase. Um, at that point, when we slow down to um, about the 1,100 miles an hour, if I can have the next slide, please, uh, we go ahead and deploy the parachute. So we're going about Mach 1.5, 1 1.5 times the speed of sound. It's about 1,100 miles an hour. And uh, we rely on the parachute to slow us down uh, considerably more. Um, one of the things that's such a challenge about uh, the Mars landing is we have an atmosphere, so we need that heat shield, but we don't have a, a thick atmosphere. So you need the, the heat shield to slow you down, you need the parachute to slow you down further, but the atmosphere is, is thin relative to Earth, so you need that terminal descent phase. If you're going to land on the moon, you don't need a heat shield, you don't need a parachute, you just need terminal descent. If you're going to land on Earth, uh, you need a heat shield and a parachute, but you can, you know, people unprotected land on Earth all the time with parachutes. You don't need the terminal descent phase. We've got, we've got all three. So we've got the trifecta of challenge here as, as we're going through our reconfigurations. Um, okay, next slide, please. Okay, as we're on the parachute, we deploy the heat shield and then uh, extend the legs. And this image shows us with the heat shield deployed and the legs extended. This is the point Barry talked about where we uh, activate the radar. The radar is absolutely critical. Um, we do have a couple of film clips at the end here that show parachute testing and radar drop testing. All right, at this point now, we've got a ground fix. Um, we know where the ground is. We have attitude and velocity determination. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, we now release from the back shell. Now, as if this wasn't exciting enough, this is when it really gets exciting. We've lost the cocoon. We've lost the safety net hanging from the parachute. We're now a free flyer. And it's all up to the terminal descent system to bring us safely onto the surface. Okay, the terminal descent phase, next slide please, lasts about 37 seconds, and that's where we get ourselves into what we call the constant velocity mode, and that's five miles an hour, and the objective is to get to constant velocity as quickly as we can, that's margin. And when you're a, a flight designer, uh, margin is a good thing. So we're uh, trying to get to constant velocity as quickly as we can, take constant velocity mode down to the surface, and touch down um, at, um, about seven minutes after we start the entry process. Next picture, please. So here we are on the surface. This is the lander with the solar rays deployed, and there's our butterfly with those beautiful wings um, extended. So um, that's what we're looking at on the evening of the 25th. Now, what I have coming up next is a couple of film clips, and what these film clips highlight is something that's been a hallmark of the Phoenix program. We've done extensive testing throughout the development phase. We really did have an advantage with Phoenix that we inherited a fairly mature design from the Mars Surveyor 01 uh, project, and we, we really used that to our advantage. The first film clip uh, is something that's gonna, it's gonna contain two things. It's got a parachute test and a uh, radar test. The key thing about the parachute test is you need to make sure that your parachute will fully inflate under all the conditions that it may experience at Mars, and you also have to make sure that the harness or the bridle of the parachute can handle the snatch loads when that parachute pops open. Uh, our analysis shows that we'll experience around 10,000 pounds of force that are generated when that snatch load occurs. We tested the parachute to almost a factor of 1.5 times greater than that. So that, that's a really important thing, again, to get margin in where you can. The second portion of this film clip is the radar testing. And, and this really exemplifies the teamwork between JPL and Lockheed Martin doing the radar test program. Very extensive. Uh, we fully simulated the entire profile of entry, descent, and landing for the, for the radar portion uh, by doing drop testing with a helicopter where we actually had a, a, had a deployer coming out the helicopter. You're going to see the video where it looks like there's a bomb, and that's kind of what it, it looks like where the 
the um, radar head is mounted on the bottom of this. We release it out of the, the uh, helicopter, and we actually um, convince the radar system that it is flying to Mars at that point in time, and we gather the data and reduce the data, and we, we uh, learned a great deal during that and made a lot of adjustments in exactly how we flow that profile. So let's go ahead and roll that first video. This will go by fairly quick. Fully inflated, and this will be uh, how we'll spend a, a chunk of our flight down. So this is the uh, radar testing here. There's the bomb I spoke of. The